Okay, in this video, we're going to explore the concept of integer programming. So let's go ahead and dive right into our question. So the Lakeshore Aquatic Innovation Company located in Toronto's Lakeside District manufactures two popular water recreation products. That is a high performance wakeboard and sea -dews. Both items require a two step production process involving design and manufacturing. It takes about two hours to design each wakeboard and three hours to design a sea -dew. The manufacturing of the wakeboards and sea -dews requires six and five hours respectively. The production capability is such that 12 hours of design time and 30 hours of manufacturing time are available each week. If the wakeboard produced nets, the firm $600 and each sea -dew $700, Lakeshore's aquatic production mix can be formulated using integer programming as followed. Okay, so we're not going to get too hung up on our integer programming just yet. We will cover it and you will start to understand it as we go through, um, but let's go ahead and just set up our problem. Now with integer programming, similar to linear programming, we have an objective function. And in this case, we're going to assume that the objective is to maximize firm profit so we're going to say maximize Z is equal to, well, we get 600 for each wakeboard. So 600 X plus 700 for each C do. So 700 Y. And we're going to say let X equal the number of wakeboards. Produced each week and we're going to say let y equal the number of c -dews produced each week okay good enough we then can move on and similar to what we would do in linear programming, we're going to write out our constraints. So we're going to say subject to, and we got to identify what our constraints are. So in this question, we have a two-step production process involving design and manufacturing. So those are going to be our two constraints. So our first constraint is just design. And we're told that it takes two hours to design each wakeboard and three hours to design each sea -dew, and that we have a maximum of 12 hours to do it. So what we're going to say is 2x plus 3y must be less than or equal to 12 hours, right? Our manufacturing Well, we're told, let's just clean this up a little bit. We're told that it takes six hours per wakeboard and five hours per sea -dew, and we have a maximum of 30 hours. So we're going to say 6x plus 5y less than or equal to 30 hours. Now, similar to linear programming, we're going to say x, y must be greater than or equal to zero. That's our non-negativity constraint. And when we're dealing with integer programming, we're just going to say and integer. Okay, an integer being something that you can count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. Now we could plug this right into Excel and get our answer, but let's go ahead and explore this using the graphical method first. Since we only have x and y, we could look at this graphically. So let's go ahead and look at this graphically. So here's our graphical solution. And we have our plane already set out. So let's just revisit what we have as our objective function. So our objective function was the, such that max Z is equal to 600 X plus 700 Y, right? And we already have our X and Y labeled on our graph. And we had two constraints. And our first one was that 2X plus 3Y less than or equal to 12. So 2x plus 3y less than or equal to 12. And our second constraint 
was 5x plus 5y less than or equal to 30. So 6x plus 5y less than or equal to 30, as well as our non-negativity and integer constraint. So similar to what we've done in previous videos, we can go ahead and plot these constraints. So let's go ahead and solve for our x and y intercept for each. So let's take our first equation here. So 2x plus 3y less than or equal to 12. Let's solve for our x-intercept first. So we're going to set y is equal to 0. So 2x plus 3 times 0 is equal to 12. So 2x is equal to 12. Which means that x is equal to 12 divided by 2. So x is equal to 6. We can plot that right on our graph here so we'll put 6 and then we'll set this time we'll set x is equal to 0 and find our y intercept so 2x plus 3y is equal to 12 set x is equal to 0 so in this case 2 times 0 plus 3y is equal to 12 so then y is equal to 12 divided by 3 so y is equal to 4 okay just like that we can plot this line on our graph just like we have done before and we'll just label it and so this is 2x plus 3y less than or equal to 12. Okay very good. Now we can go ahead and solve for our x and y intercept for our second constraint so uh, 6x plus 5y less than or equal to 30. Let's solve for our y intercept first this time so 6 times 0 plus 5y is equal to 30. So 5y is equal to 30. So y is equal to 30 divided by 5. So y is equal to 6. We can then solve for our x-intercept. So 6x plus 5y is equal to 30. We'll set y is equal to 0 this time. So 6x plus 5 times 0 is equal to 30. So then 6x, whoops, 6x is equal to 30, so x is equal to 5. So 5 and 6 respectively. So let's go ahead and put this on our graph. So we'll do it in a different color. So 5 and 6. And we'll just plot this line here. And it'll look something like that. And we will... <clears throat> write our line here. So this is 6x plus 5y less than or equal to 30. Not sure why that came out so funny. So 6x plus 5y less than or equal to 30. Okay, and just like that, we have our corner point. We have our corner points. So as you remember from other videos, we can map out our corner points. And we know that our optimal solution is going to be on one of these four corner points. Now, given we are looking at a maximization type of problem, we know that it's not going to be this point right here. Zero, zero would give us zero uh, profit. But we can find some of these other points. So let's look at, let's just look at point, we'll call this point A, point B, and point C. So let's first solve for point A because that's relatively easy. So max Z is equal to 600 times, in this case, zero, because X is equal to zero, plus 700 times four. So this is gonna give us 2,800. Seven times four is 28, so this will give us 2,800. So 2,800. This is at point at A. Max Z at B is equal to, well, we know that that's five, so 600 times five plus 700 times zero. Well, this is equal to 3,000 at point B. Now the real question is, is what is the intercept value of point C? 
Well, we can solve for that as we have before. So let's go ahead and solve for our intercept of the two lines, our two constraint lines. So we have our first constraint and our second constraint. So let's isolate x. So we're going to take one and we're gonna say two x plus three y less than or equal to 12. So we're going to isolate for x. So two x is equal to 12 minus three y. So x is equal to 12 divided by two minus three y divided by two. So therefore x is equal to 12 divided by two is six minus three y over two. From there, what we can do is we can then say sub one into two, where our second equation was six x plus five y less than or equal to 30. So six x plus five y less than or equal to 30. We have x, so six times six minus three y over two plus five y is equal to 30. So six times six is 36. I can do that better. 36 minus three, six times negative three over two. So six times three divided by two, which gives us negative nine y plus five y is equal to 30. So then negative nine y plus five y is equal to 30 minus 36. which means that negative four y is equal to negative six. So then y is equal to negative six divided by negative four. So y is equal to negative six divided by four gives us 1.5. From there, we can then solve for our value of x and we'll just sub y is equal to 1.5 into our first equation that is 2x plus 3y less than or equal to 12. So 2x plus 3y less than or equal to 12. So 2x plus, we've solved for y, 3. Three times 1.5 is equal to 12. So 2x plus 4.5. 3 times 1.5 is 4.5 is equal to 12. So then 2x is equal to 12 minus 4.5. So then x is equal to 12 minus 4.5 gives us 7.5 divided by 2. So x is equal to 3.75. Okay, so we go up here and we look at point C. And we'll just do this in a different color. So our it's at 3.75 and 1.5 is our intercept. So we can go ahead and just plot this. So our max Z is equal to 600 times 3.75 plus 700 times 1.5, which gives us 600 times 3.75 plus 700 times 1.5, which gives us 3,300. Okay, so technically speaking, point C is our optimal solution, right? However, we have an integer constraint. So you'll remember that in our, when we mapped this out, we have an integer constraint. X, X and Y must be greater than or equal to zero and an integer. Well, 3.75 and 1.5 both are not integers, right? An integer would be a number like three or four or five or one or two. So there's a couple of ways we could go about solving this. Um, the first is to estimate. And we could estimate our solution and we could say, well, 3.75 is kind of four 
and 1.5 is almost 2, so we could simply round our answer. So if we were to round our answer to 4 and 2, so 4 wakeboards and 2 sedus, we would get the following point. And I'll just do this in yellow. Our point would look right here at intercept 4, 2. Now, importantly, I hope you can observe something here, and that is that we are beyond our feasibility region, right? We have identified that our feasibility region is within this yellow shaded region right here. So if we have our point that exists at 4, 2, that is definitively beyond our feasibility region. Now, we could then say, well, if that's beyond our feasibility region, what if we said uh, 4, 1, right? And we put our point right here. Now, the question is, is, well, is that the new optimal solution or not? And there is an infinite number, well, not an infinite number, but a great deal number of points within this feasibility region that we would have to check in order to find our optimal solution. Okay, so in this particular case, we're going to defer to Excel to find our optimal solution. We'll do that in another video. But the important thing I want to note, you to notice here is that simply rounding or estimating, uh, you may be prone to an error that brings you beyond the feasibility region, right? So if we were to say that the optimal solution is at 4, 2, that point exists right here, which is beyond the feasibility region. Okay, that would satisfy our integer constraint, but it would not satisfy our other constraints. So that's the, that's the important lesson here. So we will go into Excel and we'll solve this um, using Solver in the next video. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If this video helped make business analytics easy, consider giving the video a like. And if you need additional help with business analytics, please consider subscribing to the channel. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.